Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Moon Project. We here at the Moon Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to inspiration, education, information, guidance, advice. And I want to point out um, an interesting correlation um, with respect to the Matsura. This is a, someone who uh, suffers from the disease Tsaras usually translated as leprosy, but not ordinary, everyday, garden variety, run-of-the-mill leprosy. This is a spiritually inflicted disease. Tsaras is the physical punishment in this world for malicious gossip. The Baal the, 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 the person who uh, is a malicious slanderer, a, a horrible gossip, um, we're talking about this person, the Baal Lashon Hara. Now, in the Torah, in Leviticus uh, 13, verse 46, it says that uh, when a person is afflicted with tsaras, he's supposed to be taken outside the camp, and he must dwell in solitude. His dwelling shall be outside the camp, Leviticus 13, verse 46. Why? It's not contagious. It's not like people are going to get the tsaras from him. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritually, uh, it's a spiritually inflicted disorder. It's a disease. Why the isolation? I think there's an important lesson in this. Everyone knows that lashon hara, malicious gossip, is a very serious uh, sin, and the tragic effect it can have on those involved. The people who give the Lashon Hara, who give the slander, who spread the slander, people who listen, and the person who is being slandered. It's um, bad news all around. So, what can stop? What can prevent this? And I think the secret is in the punishment. Sorry, not the punishment, is in the cure. Part of the cure is that the Matsura, the, 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 the person who has the disease, has to dwell outside the camp until a period of his uh, cleanliness. Until then, the, the, his Tsaras is gone, and the, the priest will make that determination. Then he prepares for re entry. So, what does living alone do for the leper, the person suffering from Tsaras? How does it change? his outlook on slanderous speech. And if you ponder the mindset of the gossip, the person who is the malicious slanderer, the Baal Lashon Hara, we discover a, a specific aspect, a characteristic of his personality that uh, for some, is probably the um, prime motivator in disparaging others and spreading these, this horrible gossip. They think they endear themselves to people when they're the uh, primary source of information. You're going around, oh, did you hear about this? Did you hear so-and-so did this? Did you hear about that? You know, they feel that people will want to engage them in conversation because they will provide them with something interesting to talk about. People are curious to hear juicy gossip, especially about other people. It's a human fault. The gossiper, the slanderer, wants to be the medium for disseminating this information. He thereby provides himself with a constant following of friends in air quotes. Now, as many things are, in the short term, this is probably true to a certain extent. People enjoy, some people thrive on the gossip of others. Remember, the Avera, the sin, is not just telling the gossip. This, there's a corresponding sin in listening to the gossip. And even if you hear it unintentionally, you're not supposed to believe it. Now, the relationship between the slanderer and the person hearing it, does this relationship based on gossip, schmutz, uh, disparaging others. Is that a true friendship, and does that really endure? Anybody with a, with a drop of sense doesn't want to 
have a malicious gossiper as a true friend because that person is destructive. He's, he's sick. He might be a temporary little delight, some juicy little bit of gossip, but he's never someone that you would choose to have in your uh, circle of friends or someone that you want to relate to on a regular basis. Anyone with any sense of refinement would do well to distance themselves from a slanderer and a malicious gossiper. Anyone who keeps company with such a person is probably on an equally low level. No one wants to be a friend with someone who's going to stab him in the back the next day because if he's gossiping about somebody else to you tomorrow, he's going to be gossiping gossiping about you to somebody else. He doesn't discriminate. He's an equal opportunity slanderer. The Matsura's excommunication from the community, not religious excommunication, his, his exile, his temporary isolation from the community, having to live alone by himself, it's appropriate and fitting for the process, for the punishment, for, the, for the, the, what he has to go through to, to relieve himself of this affliction. Maybe, just maybe, by being alone, he will come to realize the true effect of his evil tongue. It's destructive. A gossiper ultimately ends up alone because however tickled they may be with a little bit of uh, juicy news, no one wants this person, not really because they know in their heart of hearts the person is sick and the person is destructive. Stay away, distance yourself from a gossiper. As tempted as you may be to hear whatever juicy bit of gossip that comes along, don't listen, don't, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to you, it's certainly not worth it to the person saying it and Lord knows it's destructive to the person being talked about. We're gonna be doing more videos along these lines Please come back, please watch, please learn, and until next time, on behalf of the Emona Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.